Hello everyone, how's it going? Cloud here, and welcome to my guide on a Lunar Diplomacy quest. Now, for this quest, you need to have completed the following requirements. So you need to have these quests uh, completed, the Lost City, the Fremenic Trials, Rune Mysteries, Shiloh Village, Jungle Potion, and Druidic Ritual. And you'll also need the following skill requirements. Please note that none of these are boostable, so you need to actually get to the level itself. 61 crafting, 40 defense, 49 fire making, 60 mining, 5 herb lore, 14 rune crafting, 65 magic, 55 wood cutting. You'll need a sub skill requirement of 25 fletching and 32 agility. You will also need to be able to kill uh, several level 73, 74 and 79 monsters. And you must also have the ability to access the air, earth, fire and water rune crafting altars. Which will mean that you need uh, the relevant talisman um, or tiara or wicked hood uh, to get to those. I'll talk about the wicked hood a bit further on. That's it for the requirements, now onto the items. You'll need a few thousand coins, um, some runes for casting combat spells with the lunar staff, uh, preferably fire spells, so obviously uh, air and fire runes there. Uh, Draymond staff uh, is advised to have more than one of these for backup and you can make extra lunar staves with these. Now the Draymond staff is the item you would have acquired after completing the Lost City quest. So if you've lost your Draymond staff and need uh, advice on how to get another one, I would suggest you just look up uh, my Lost City uh, quest guide which is in the video description below and just uh, basically use that to backtrack on how to make a Draymond staff. You will also need a spade, the one in your tool belt will not work so you need a physical one in your inventory. Now you will need either a wicked hood or air, water, earth, fire, talismans, tiaras or access to the abyss. Now I highly recommend you have a wicked hood um, which you can obtain from someone in Burthorpe I believe, um, if not just Google search uh, on the RS Wiki um, Wicked Hood and it will tell you how to get one. Um, basically, the Wicked Hood enables you to imbue all your different um, runecraft and talismans into it and it also gives you the function to teleport uh, to different altars as well, which we will be using during this guide as it does help. Um, now, those of you who do Treasure Hunter, you can get Wicked Hood teleport tokens from that, I believe. So, some of you may have them in your bank and you can use that to increase the amount of teleports you've got. So, you then that will save a bit of time later on. But don't worry too much about that. You'll also need some thread. Uh, bring a five thread, that will be the uh, most you're going to need. Uh, some clean guam and clean morental. And you will also need good armor, a weapon, and food to fight against the different uh, monsters. Also, having some runes for superheat item um, will also help as well. So that consists of fire and nature runes and obviously the relevant magic level to use them, which I believe uh, is required for this quest anyway, so you should have that. So that's it for the requirements and items, and now we're going to be on to the quest starting point. But just before that, just to give you a pre-warning, it's quite a lengthy quest, um, particularly a part where you end up going into like the dream world. There's all these different activities to complete, so uh, you may uh, need to be prepared to do uh, a long time with this quest, or um, sort of stop halfway through it and resume your progress at a later point. So just take note of what bit you're up to if you do take a break from it. So as for the quest starting point, we're currently at the Fremenic Province Lodestone, which can be accessed via the Lodestone network. And from here, we need to head to the town of Relica, uh, which is to the west of the uh, Fremenic Lodestone. And uh, we need to head to where the westernmost docks are. Uh, and we're going to speak to a man called Lokar Sea Runner. So I'll speak to you in a moment. So once you're at the docks, you should see him. Now he will only talk to you after you get all the requirements. If you don't have all of them, you won't be able to continue with the quest. He will talk to you about his life as a pirate and the Moon Clan. And to visit the Moon Clan, he tells you to obtain a seal of passage, which allows you to safely travel and stay on Lunar Isle. So what you need to do is go to the Relic of Long Hall and speak to Brunt the Chieftain to get a seal of passage. Once you speak to him, he should give you it and make sure you keep it in your inventory during the entire quest um, whenever you are on the Lunar Islands or related places, otherwise you'll be teleported back to Relica. Go back and talk to Lokar again and you'll be sailed to the Pirate's Cove and then the players can now board the pirate ship, the Lady Zay from the Cove. 
So climb up two ladders and board the pirate ship. Um, and now be sure you're actually aboard the ship when talking to the captain and not on the, um, the plank. Otherwise, this next bit won't be able to happen. I didn't realize this uh, until a bit later on. So just make sure you're actually physically on the ship. And also make sure you are wearing the seal of passage uh, and you then want to talk to Captain Bentley and when you ask to sail to Lunar Isle the ship will strangely sail around in a circle. Speak to the Captain Bentley again and he is puzzled and asks you to talk with the ship's navigator. So we need to go talk to the navigator, Bird's Eye Jack, who is on the lower deck in the southwest corner of the ship. Speak to him and he'll tell you that his navigation skills are perfect and he'll get annoyed with you. So you then want to go talk to Captain Bentley again. He sends you back to speak to Bird's Eye Jack and um, returns to him and after an amusing conversation he concludes that the ship is jinxed and then once again you want to go talk back to Captain Bentley. Captain Bentley will ask you to investigate who or what on the ship has been jinxed. So you want to start with Eagle Eye Schultz, uh, he is on the same deck as Captain Bentley uh, near the front of the ship and he explains jinxes to you. Next we need to go talk to Beefy Burns who's on the very bottom level of the ship in the southwest corner in the galley. Once you find him and talk to him, he'll tell you a bit about the pirate's visit to the Moon Clan. Go up three levels to the stern of the ship and then you want to speak to Lecherous Lee about the big feast and he says he saw the first mate slip away for a bit. You want to confront first mate Davy Boy who is on the same deck as Captain Bentley in the room uh, at the stern of the ship and he is however able to explain his absence but mentions that he couldn't find the cabin boy at the feast. Then finally talk with the cabin boy who is on the same deck as Lecherous Lee and he confesses that a girl from the Moon Clan tricked him into drawing fire symbols throughout the ship. The cabin boy gives you a special lantern and lens that you can use to search for the uh, ship for the symbols. You want to use the emerald lens on the bullseye lantern frame to create a mystical emerald lantern. Then light the lantern by selecting light. The cabin boy also gives you five clues for finding the symbol, so I'll tell you where to find each one. So the first one is on the cannon, so right there on the top deck in the stern where you found Lecherous Lee and the cabin boy, use the lantern on the cabin of the east side of the deck and select the rub away option. One was up on the wall, now on the same floor as the captain in the first mate's cabin, uh, use the lantern on the wall chart to the west of the door and select the rub away option. One was on the chair, so you want to go to the very bottom of the ship in the hold and use the lantern on the only chest near the stairs and select the rub away option. One was on a support, uh, so still on the same floor near the stern of the ship. Uh, use the lantern on the support beam just outside the cook's gallery and select the rub away option. And then one was on a box of some sort, so the same floor. Uh, use the lantern on the two large stacked crates east of the cook's gallery and select rub away. Once you've rubbed away the five uh, hexes, you'll be able to talk to Captain Bentley again and set sail for Lunar Isle. So once you arrive uh, on Lunar Isle, climb down from the raised dock and head northwest into the city and a cutscene of a bird's eye vision of the city plays upon your initial walking through the city gates.
So we now need to speak to a girl called Meteora, uh, who has no association with Lincoln Park whatsoever. <laughs> uh, and here in the uh, southwest part of the village, um, she will tell you that although the clan doesn't have a leader, the Honorai Mansa is able to help you more than anyone. So we now need to go to the southeast part of the island uh, to the astral altar and talk to the Onaira Romancer. Uh, be careful of the Shugars near B. Now, if uh, you wish to, you can start killing the Shugars now as you're going to need a Shugar tooth and four Shugar hide later on, uh, so you can choose to obtain them on your way if you wish. Either way, once you talk to the Onaira Romancer, she will tell you more about the Moon Clan's feud with the Fremenic. She also asks that you try to understand the Moon Clan's ways, and to do so, you need to go through their ritual. And to prepare for the ritual, you need to make three things, a waking sleeping potion, a lunar staff and ceremonial travelling clothes. So uh, to make the waking sleep potion we need to go talk to Baby Yaga who is in the chicken leg house uh, in the north of the village, uh, so head in that direction now. During your talk with her, she'll give you a special vial and says that you need guam leaf, morental and some ground sugar tooth to complete the potion. Now obviously if you've got the sugar tooth uh, with you, you can um, obviously carry on with this step. If not, you need to go and obtain one by killing them until they drop it. So in Baby Yaga's house, there is a sink which you can fill your vial with. What you then need to do is use your guam leaf and morento on this special vial of water and then uh, if you uh, click to ground the sugar tooth that you have uh, it will turn it into dust and you can then add that to the potion to get the waking sleep potion uh, and you then need to take this potion back to the Onai Romancer. So um, the Onara Mancer will keep the potion for you until you need it later on and you now want to talk to the, uh, her about the next thing which is the Lunar Staff. So please note that you may want to make more than one Lunar Staff. After you give one to the Onara Mancer you will lose the ability to create a staff uh, so making a few backups might be useful. Um, so this will require uh, more than one Draymond Staff. So in order to make your Draymond Staff into a Lunar Staff, you need to visit each four of the Elemental Altars in a specific order and use your Draymond Staff on that relevant altar. Once you use it on the fourth altar and you've done it in the right order, it will become a Lunar Staff. And obviously you need to do this for each uh, Staff that you intend to turn into a Lunar Staff. Now the altars you need to visit in order are the Air Altar, which is west of Varrock, the Fire Altar, which is north of Alcarid, the Water Altar, which is in the Lumbridge Swamp, and the Earth Altar, which is northeast of Varrock, uh, near the Lumberyard. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this guide, there is a Wicked Hood, which enables you to teleport uh, to the relevant altar if you select it. Now, um, normally the Wicked Hood only gives you two teleports per day to use. However, um, with Treasure Hunter, you can obtain these things called Wicked Hood teleport tokens, which you may have obtained at one point uh, and just sort of kept them in your bank. Uh, these can be used on your Wicked Hood to increase the amount of teleports. So you'll notice with my uh, character, because I kept getting Wicked Hood teleport tokens from Treasure Hunter, I was able to teleport to each of the four altars just to save traveling around um, so you can either use that option to do it or you can just manually walk to each of the relevant altars uh, and obviously um, I will tell you and show you on the map where they are and what's the closest lodestone. So the first altar we're heading to is the Air Altar, which is west of Varrock. Now, um, obviously, use the uh, Wicked Hood Teleport option if you do have that. If not, the quickest way to get there is to go to the Varrock Lodestone and then keep running uh, northwest of where you are until you reach it. Go into the Air Altar and use the Draymond Staff on the uh, altar to complete the first stage of it. And obviously, if you've got other Draymond Staffs with you, make sure you use them on it as well. Next we're heading to the Fire Altar which is north of Alcarid so again either use your Wicked Hood teleport option or you can teleport to the Alcarid Lodestone and head uh, north until you see it. Uh, it's right next to the Jewel Arena so you can't really miss it. And then once again inside use both uh, either your staff or staffs on the altar uh, to complete the second stage. 
Next altar is the water altar, uh, which is located in the Lumbridge Swamp. So again, either teleport using your Wicked Hood or teleport to the Lumbridge Lodestone and then head uh, through the swamp until you reach the altar. And again, use your staff or staffs on the water altar to complete the third stage, which leaves only one more, which is the earth altar, uh, which is northeast of Varrock. Now this one is the furthest away, um, so if you only have a couple of uh, Wicked Hood teleport um, options I would probably save um, at least one of them for this one just to save you a bit of walking um, but if not what you need to do is head from the Varrock Lodestone uh, northeast and keep following the path which leads to the Lumber Yard and the Earth Altar is literally just next to that and then once again uh, use your uh, Draymond Staff on the Earth or Altar and it will turn it into its fourth stage and become a Lunar Staff. Once you've successfully made your Lunar Staff, you now need to return to Lunar Isle to give it to the Oniromancer. Now you can't actually use the Lunar Isle Lodestone yet, so you will have to get back there the way you did originally at the beginning of the quest. So I'll speak to you in a few moments. So once you're back on Lunar Isle and you've spoken to the Oniromancer, she will uh, take one of your Lunar Staffs if you've made uh, more and keep it for you until you need it later and will now tell you how to obtain the ceremonial travelling clothes. Make sure you go through all the different dialogue options on how to obtain each piece of the um, uh, tra uh, travelling clothes otherwise you may be prevented from actually obtaining them uh, during these next bits. So once you have made sure you have asked her about all the pieces of the ceremonial travelling clothes, we're now going to start making them and obtaining them. So the first one we're going to get is the helmet. So with any pickaxe, uh, one on your tool belt will work, head northeast of the island to find the Lunar Isle a mine. It is marked with a dungeon symbol on a mini-map and there's quite a few shoe guards around to so be careful of them. Enter the mine through the small shack and mine one of the grey stalagmites in the western part of the mine to get some lunar ore. Now, assuming that you have fire and nature runes, you can cast superheat ore um, onto the um, ore to turn it into a bar. Um, if not, you'll have to travel back to Relica and use uh, the furnace there to obviously make it into the relevant bar. Um, you can then use the bar on the anvil uh, to smith the lunar bar into a lunar helmet. If you've remained on Lunar Isle, there is an anvil in a small building on the south side of the town next to the water stream. So the next thing we're going to make is the cape. So you need to go to the town of Lunar Isle and talk with Pauline Polaris, who is in a house in the northwest corner of the village. She wants you to guess her real name before she gives you the Lunar Cape. So first you want to choose the option Pauline and she tells you that is her, um, that is her alias and will give you a clue to her name. And uh, now without telling you the whole method of obtaining the name, the correct one is Jane Blood Hagic Maid. Choose that option and after you've guessed correctly, she'll give you the cape. So next we're going to obtain the amulets. You want to go talk to Lincoln Park, no sorry, <laughs> Meteora, uh, in the southwest part of the village. Uh, and uh, she's the one we obviously spoke to earlier on. And ask you to retrieve the tiara she lost to the Shugars. So you want to go uh, to where the Shugars are, either the ones round near the mine or further down near the Oniromancer. And kill the Shugars until one of them drops a special tiara. If you haven't uh, already got them from earlier, now would be a good time to also collect your four Shugar highs. As you need them to make the ceremonial clothes in the next step. Once you have found the uh, um, special tiara, you want to return it to uh, Meteora uh, to trade it for the lunar amulet. Now we're going to make the torso, the trousers, the gloves and the boots. So what you need to do is go speak with Rime Salas, I have no idea how to pronounce that name, uh, who runs the Moon Clan Fine Clothes Shop, which is uh, opposite the bank. She can tan the Shugar hides for 100 GP each, so you want to have her tan the four Shugar hides you got earlier. Then, using your needle in your tool belt and your thread, you want to make them into the four relevant pieces of the lunar uh, equipment, which is the torso, trousers, gloves and boots. 
And now the final piece of the ceremonial clothes is the ring. So talk with Celine, who is near the centre of the village or in or around one of the buildings uh, and she will give you a clue to finding the ring. So with your uh, spade in your inventory, you're going to go out of the eastern gate of the village and travel southeast until you reach a bridge, cross it and then go west and cross another bridge and keep heading west till you see a patch of blue flowers near a starfish. Um, you can obviously just see on my screen where I'm going and what you want to do is dig on top of the flowers to obtain the ring. You won't be able to dig the ring out if you haven't talked to Celine first. So with all the lunar items you just made and found, we need to go back and talk with the Onaromancer. Now make sure you have 11 empty slots, um, but some of these will include your ceremonial clothes because she'll first take everything from you for safekeeping and it gives you back all your ceremonial clothes, lunar stuff and potion, plus some magic kindling for the ceremony. Now if you die during this portion and lose some or all of the equipment required for the ritual, the Onara Master will have a replacement, so don't worry you haven't got to reobtain all of them. So in the next part of this is we're going to be going into Dreamland. Now before entering Dreamland, make sure you have your seal of passage and some food with you. You will need some runes uh, for fire spells, which uh, is part of the last test. Um, and be sure you have at least four inventory spots free. One thing to bear in mind, if when entering Dreamland your screen turns black and white, you need to go into the graphical options and turn the bloom effect off if you have it on. It's a certain glitch that happens. Um, so put on your ceremonial clothes um, so you won't have any use for the uh, original armor and that you were using so you can put them in the bank. Uh, you want to wield the lunar staff and then go to the big building at the far west end of the village that has the ceremonial brazier. So making sure you are wearing all of the lunar equipment and wielding the staff, what you need to do is use the waking sleep vial on the uh, kindling and then light the brazier with a tinder box from your tool belt and then place the soaked kindling into the brazier and you'll then be teleported to the land of your own dreams. Talk to the ethereal man or ethereal lady, depending on your character's gender, and they explain that you are about to take a test by completing a series of tasks or puzzles. You do six lessons and then a final challenge with yourself. If you fail at any of the tasks, you can try again. And after completing each task, talk to the ethereal person in the centre, and you can do the task in any order. So the first game we're, uh, or mini game we're going to do is called A Game of Chance. Now to get to this task you want to step on the platform which is located at the 7 o'clock position if you have the map orientated north. The platform is avocado green. Once you um, go over to that island speak with Ethereal Fluke who explains how to play the game. The Fluke will shout at a number and what you need to do is flip over the 6 dice so that the sum of the numbers uh, facing up equals to the Fluke's number. So if he shouts at 15 you could roll over the dice to show 6 plus plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 to equal 15. Each dice has just two possibilities however which makes it a little bit easier. The number facing up and the number on its opposite side. So depending on what is facing up uh, any one die can show either 1 or 6, 2 or 5, 3 or 4. So there's no real sort of like method or uh, help I can give you with this bit. Um, it's basically just down to uh, maths. Um, so whatever number he shouts out, you need to obviously uh, work out um, by using the respective dice. Now I'm quite good at math so I was able to figure this out fairly quickly, however if you really get stuck I suggest either go to the uh, Lunar Diplomacy page on the RS Wiki or um, obviously don't rely on me to have an instant reply to you but if you leave a comment saying what number you've been asked and can't figure out the solution I will eventually reply to you and let you know. I do check my comments every day but don't expect an immediate response, you could be looking at quite a few hours um, because I do have to sleep and work. Uh, but the fluke will shout out a series of different numbers uh, and obviously each time you successfully add up the dice to that number he will then shout out the next one. He will give you five different numbers in total in this task. A hint I will give is an easy way to do it is to set all the dice to their lowest values and then calculate the increase needed. So the lowest number you can get um, by turning all the dice uh, to their lowest value is 12 and the highest is 30. After you completed the task though, uh, talk with the ethereal person in the centre again to tell them what you've learned. So the next one we're going to do is communicating in numbers. To get to this task, step on the platform lo uh, located at the 4 o'clock position. The platform is lavender and you want to speak with the ethereal numerator who explains how to complete this task. He speaks with a mixture of numbers and words and making out his meaning can be challenging. If you skip over the numbers in this conversation however and just read words you can understand him. 
So this uh, is a maths uh, related uh, task again and the numerator will tell you a sequence of numbers and you need to work out the pattern in the sequence and then press the two numbers that will come next in the pattern. So for example, if he shouts out uh, 1, 2, 3, the next two numbers will be 4 and 5. And then a little bit more of a complicated one, if he shouts out 1, 9, 2, 8, the pattern there is, is um, plus 8 to get from 1 to 9, then minus 7 to get from 9 to 2, and then plus 6 to get to uh, 8. So basically you're alternating between plus and minus, so the next one would be 3, as it would be 8 minus 3, uh, 8 minus 5, sorry, is 3, and then um, you would then go back to plus, but go down to 4, so 3 plus 4 would be 7. Once again, you will need to solve five different patterns. Now, again, I can't really uh, tell you an easier method to do than just trying to work out the pattern. But once again, if you get really stuck, then obviously refer to the Lunar Topolomacy page on the RS Wiki. Or again, uh, you can mention it in the comment section and I'll do my best to reply to you as quick as I can to help you. After you have solved all five patterns, talk with the ethereal person again to tell them what you learned. The next task is called Chop Chop Away, and to get to this task, step on the platform located at the uh, 1 o'clock position, and the platform is slate blue. Speak with the ethereal uh, perceptive who explains the test. So this test is one of the really easy ones, so he will challenge you to a log cutting race, the first one to pile 20 logs in the centre wins. The ethereal perceptive deposits two logs at a time and walks, so to beat him, turn on run, cut all four of your dream trees, and then deposit them in the centre. Another little thing you can do, um, which I tested and does work, it is possible to distract him while he's cutting some logs by talking to him. And sometimes if you talk to him, he will freeze until you are finished. If you just walk away from the dialogue, he'll just stay there. So basically, uh, the method is simple. Just make sure you've got four inventory slots free. Cut each of the four dream trees as they take a little bit of time to respawn. And while they're respawning, you can put your logs on the pile. Uh, and you should complete that task pretty easy. And once you've completed it, talk with the ethereal person again to tell them what you've learned. Next is where am I and to get to this task step on the platform located at the 10 o'clock position. Uh, the platform is pink slash white. Um, now you want to speak with the ethereal guide who explains this task. Now this is similar to the pit and the grid part of the underground pass. So what you need to do, you need to basically get from one side to the other by jumping over the relevant platforms. Um, some of the platforms however will make you fall so you need to work out the correct method to get across. You cannot move diagonally, but you can jump north, east, south and west. So you're going to either need to play quite close attention to figure out the correct path because it's different for each player. Um, one thing you can do if you've got um, screen recording software, you can record your footage to keep track on which paths are the correct ones. Uh, another thing you can do as, as uh, the dream paths are laid out in a 4x8 grid, so if you grab a pencil and a piece of uh, paper, draw a 4x8 grid on a piece of paper and then mark your path as you discover how to successfully hop your way across the dream paths. Other than that, I can't really give you any details or method to make this any easier. Um, just obviously try and guess, uh, and hopefully, nine times out of ten, you might be quite lucky. I generally find with these, you want to try and take the harder path if possible, so they will try and complicate it where uh, they can. So you're not going to just be north all the way through there. You might have to go north, then west, then north, then south, then east. You might have to uh, navigate uh, across the platforms quite a fair bit. However, one thing I did notice, you shouldn't have to backtrack um, to get to the other side of the islands. You should always be going in the same direction. If not, you might go sort of like west or east. Either way, once you have um, completed this task, speak with the ethereal person again to tell them what you've learned. So the next one is the race is on. To get to this challenge, step on the platform located at the 3 o'clock position uh, and the platform is T green. Speak with the ethereal expert who challenges you to a race. He bets he can beat you to the other side of the island. He takes the left and straight route. You have to take the right and curvy route with four hurdles. Now despite his advantage, this isn't as one-sided as it looks as the ethereal expert uh, only walks a few steps at a time, pauses and then takes a few more steps. So it gives you time. 
Now, um, the only annoying bit about this is you're going to have to jump over the different hurdles and you can get stuck on each hurdle, um, which will delay you. Now, if you fail three or more times, you won't win, so it's best just to wait and lose uh, to save on food and obviously um, to then resume the race uh, quicker. Make sure you have got run turned on and it, this is completely down to luck as even at 99 agility it is still possible to fail the obstacles. So all you need to do is jump over the four hurdles, try and do it as quick as you can and eat where necessary. Um, you shouldn't ever take enough damage to have to eat during the race. You just might need to uh, eat after you've uh, failed one of the races. Um, and like I said, if you fail three or more times you won't win. So obviously keep track of how many times you've failed. If you've only failed twice, uh, you still have got the opportunity to win if you fail that third time I wouldn't really bother unless you think you can after you eventually win the race uh, speak with the ethereal person again to tell them what you've learned the next task is called anything you can do and to get to this one step on the platform located at the five o'clock position and the platform is a blue green color speak with the ethereal mimic on a musical note island who explains how to complete this task now this is a really easy one the ethereal mimic will perform an emote that you then copy much like the uh, mime random event uh, the ethereal mimic uses only the basic emotes that every player has after each emote, the ethereal mimic will teleport to a different part of the island, so speak to him after each emote and pay close attention to what he does. After you have uh, successfully copied the ethereal mimic five times, talk with the ethereal person again to tell them what you've learned. Once you've completed all the tasks, speak with the ethereal person in the centre of the island. They talk about the six core lessons that you have learned and say there is one more challenge you must face. Um, so now, uh, when you're ready, tell them you are ready and you will tell be teleported to another island with two dream trees and five floating beams. You will see a me, which is a level 84 version of yourself wearing lighter coloured lunar equipment. As you fight, me, both you and me will teleport around the platform every 15 seconds or so. Turning on auto-retaliate while fighting means you can easily run back after him after you both teleport. Now, um, he will only try and attack you by just hitting you with the staff, whereas you can actually use your spells, so you'll be able to defeat him quite quickly. So you shouldn't really struggle against him at all. Um, if anything, the battle will probably end quite quickly and the chats uh, between you two are quite amusing and are worth following, but obviously if you kill him pretty fast, you won't really see much of that dialogue. Once you have defeated me, that sounds really weird saying that, sounds like you guys are going to defeat myself, um, you are teleported back to the ethereal person and talk with him again and then exit by reading the My Life book. And then back in reality, make sure you're wearing your seal of passage and return to the Onira Mancer and tell her what you've learned. So after you've told the Onira Mancer everything that has happened to you in Dreamland and what you've learned, it will come up, congratulations, you've completed the Lunar Diplomacy quest, you're awarded two quest points, 5,000 magic and runecraft and experience, access to the Lunar Isle, ability to use Lunar spells, you get to keep the Lunar equipment, use of the Astral Runecrafting altar, 50 Astral runes, the ability to get Shugars as a Slayer task, access to the livid farm, the ability to home teleport to the lunar isle lodestone, the seal of passage which can be used to teleport to the lunar isle once per day, pretty irrelevant since you can use the lodestone, uh, two treasure hunter keys and two hearts of ice. Cool, so there we go. Overall, a uh, very lengthy quest. The rewards on from it are not that great. Uh, obviously, you get to use the lunar spells, which are quite useful depending on what you're doing. Uh, and also, you'll be able to unlock further lunar spells by completing the sequel quest, Dream Mentor. That one gives you a lot better rewards from what I remember. Overall, this isn't a really difficult quest, so the only bits you might struggle on are during the Dreamland, where you've got like the mathematical bits to uh, work out, as I know some people aren't that great at maths. Uh, she's probably going to hit me for saying it, but I know Tifa uh, really doesn't uh, like doing maths, so she would really struggle during this quest. Um, whereas I'm quite good at maths, but suck when it comes to things like uh, English and that, so that's her advantage over me in that aspect. Um, but if you do get stuck at all during this guide, um, then please leave a comment in the comment section below obviously I do look at my comments every day but obviously at different times so um, if you do get stuck uh, do say in the comments uh, especially if it's on one of the maths puzzles and I will try and reply to you as quick as I can but obviously don't expect an instantaneous reply if I happen to be online on YouTube as you submit your comment I'll be able to reply straight away other than that thank you very much for watching please make sure you like favorite comment subscribe and don't forget to share with your friends cheers everyone bye